Yo, what's going on, Epic 7 fam? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Golem 13, aka the hunt you farm if you want to play tank down, turn two, or bruisers. Since the beginning of this game's lifespan, Golem's pretty much been the least popular hunt. And the main reason for that is that its primary 4P set, the attack set, it sucks. In my opinion, it's the worst set in the entire game. The reason why it's so bad is that when you look at the math and the boost that it gives compared to other 4P sets like Speed Set from Wyvern or Destruction Set from Banshee, it's just simply not that good. That said, in recent years, a lot of high-level players have proven that the other three sets, those being Health, Defense, and Protection Set, those are pretty much staples, I feel like, for any aspiring Tank Down, Turn 2, or Bruiser player. Farming Golem in tandem with another hunt like Wyvern or Banshee, that's what's going to allow you to have really high quality tanks and really high quality bruisers in this game. This video will show you how to build your very first golem team using entirely free to play units as well as freely acquired gear from the game's 6th anniversary dash pass event and the adventurer's path. Use the timestamps to skip ahead to the actual fight if that's all you want to see, but for now I'm going to go over the team, why I'm playing each of my characters, how to acquire them, and how to build them. Let's start by talking about Adventurer Roz first. So Adventurer Roz is the main character of Epic 7. Everyone has access to him, and you unlock his specialty change at the end of episode two. Considering how impactful Roz is to every single account in PvE, I really think it is worth your time to unlock his specialty change, get him to level 60, six star Woken, and also complete his skill tree. It's not mandatory by any means you could absolutely use like a five star five star awoken uh, adventurer Roz, right that will work and you could absolutely skimp out on the skill tree but considering again how important he is to the longevity and your overall epic seven career i personally think it's worth it you could also skill up all of his skills for just stigma and some catalyst if you want i definitely recommend doing that long term but i recognize the struggle of a new account i know this account that is new, is also struggling for Catalyst, so for now, I've gone with 222. As for how to build Adventurer Roz, it's pretty simple. For the artifact, simply put him on Arius if you have it. If you do not have access to it, Adamant Shield will work as a pretty good option, or Proof of Valor, which you could get from being in a guild for free. As for the actual stats, make sure his boots have Speed as a main stat, Health Percentage on the Ring, Health Percentage on the Necklace, Ideally, a four-piece speed set, but that is not necessarily mandatory. And the last thing, try to have as effective if you can at 65% plus. If you can't, that's fine. It will just make your life a little bit easier, as it will make the defense break on Command Strike quite a bit easier, and it will make X Slash consistently strip the attack buff off the goal, which means your team will take less damage. Now let's move on to Tamarin, who is going to be our main healer and our main supporter. She is, in my opinion, the best PvE character in all of Epic 7. She does basically everything, so it's really important that you get her early, unlock her, get her all skilled up and all ready to go. You'll be using her pretty much forever in Epic 7. Uh, even my main account that's been playing for six years uses Tamarin pretty much daily. She's just that strong. And thankfully, everybody gets her for free with the 6th anniversary event. To do so, just go to the hero tab here at the bottom left. Hit recruit and you will see Tamarin's connections here and just simply complete all these quest lines. The character is yours. Do note for purchase bittersweet dessert festival that requires a specific item. You get one for free as a brand new player, but if you misspend it or mismanage it, you're going to need to spend 900 sky stones to unlock the character. Now me personally, I think 900 sky stones is a small price to pay for what is arguably the best character in the game. Now let's talk about levels, skills, things like that. I have Tamron on this account at 6 stars, 6 star Woken because, again, I know how important this character is in the long term. So for me, she was a priority investment. That might not necessarily be the case for you. You might prioritize a DPS first and foremost. You could absolutely clear this with a level 50 Tamron that is 5 star Woken. As for skills, Shining Star and Song of the Forest, please max these out. These are the things that make Tamron Tamron. Definitely do not skimp on Shining Star. This is probably the most important skill enhance in the entire game. So please do get this early. You can have less on Song of the Forest, but you really do want to max this out. As for how to build the character, similar story to Raz. Effectiveness would be nice if you could get it, but boots are going to be speed main stat, health percentage on the ring, and health percentage on the necklace. 
don't worry about my sets or like specific pieces of gear that I have from like Wyvern. This should all still really easily be able to be assembled with Dash Pass stuff as well as Adventurous Pass stuff, right? As long as you have any boots with speed, you can play like the five piece health set that the game gives you for free through the Adventurous Path. As for artifacts, use whatever you want. Prophetic Candlestick is a decent three star option. I've gone with Wondrous Potion Ball because I pulled one from the game's gotcha and it is really good at getting rid of the defense break from the gold. But again, feel free to use whatever you want. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite characters in Sermia. Sermia is an absurdly powerful single target DPS. She's like a top two or top three DPS for PvE in the entire game, in my opinion. And they give her to you for free. It's just finding where to actually unlock her is a little bit confusing, I feel like, for new players. Simply go up to your mailbox here in the top right, go to ongoing events, scroll down to the side, and you will see Hunt Expert Challenge. Now, clicking this will show you this hunt expert challenge screen where you could choose one of three hunts. By completing the quest lines, you will unlock one of three five stars. Sigret for Wyvern, Sermia for Golem, or Vivian for Banshee. You can switch freely between these and you do eventually get all three of them for free. So don't worry if you pick Sermia first, you're not going to miss out on the other two. Simply choose Golem, complete the quest that it asks you to for Sermia, you'll get the character for free. One of the quest lines will require you to clear up until like Golem 7 or Golem 10 multiple times. If you have Adventure of Roz and Tamarin, you can basically play any DPS that you have until you unlock Sermia. Golem is pretty easy for the most part until you get to like Golem 11 or so. That's when you're going to want to start to have specialized units like Sermia. So again, don't worry too much. As for how we build Sermia, let's talk about levels. I personally think out of all the characters in this video, Sermia is the most deserving of your level 60, 6-star Awoken because, well, she's your primary and in this case, only damage dealer on the team comp. So you want the bonus attack that comes from being the highest level possible. The other two, Tamarin and Raza, are more worth it long term. But for right now, you should get it into your head. Primary damage dealers, main damage dealers in Epic 7, those are the ones you should be prioritizing with your level 60s, your 6-star Awokens, things like that. As for skill levels, max out as much as you can. I'm strapped for Catalyst. I'm sure you are too as a new player. But these give bonus damage. The more damage that we get on Sermia, the faster we clear things, the faster we clear things, the more gear that we get, and hopefully the faster we progress through the game. As for how to build her, it's pretty simple. Just throw whatever destruction set or penetration set or critical hit chance set stuff that the game has thrown at you for free with the 6th anniversary dash pass event. These equipment score 87 pieces are great. Any of the free 88s that they let you roll through, those are going to be great options for your Sermia. If you're watching this video and you just didn't get this free gear because maybe the dash event is over, use the 75 attack set from the Adventurous Pack. That will work just fine. As for artifacts, Daydream Joker is by far the best artifact for a PvE DPS. It massively outdamages even 5 stars. It's just super, super powerful. In fact, the game gives you six Daydream Jokers when you unlock Sermia, so there's no reason not to use a fully invested Daydream Joker. And then here I have the exclusive equipment, which is not necessary, but when you unlock enough of the quest lines in the Hunt Expert Challenge, that will give you currency for exclusive equipments for free. The best one to choose for Sermia is playing with fire because it gives you a 25% chance to basically take an extra turn on her S1 which is super, super good. It'll just, again, help speed up your run overall. Last character to talk about is Mascot Hazel, who is also another healer alongside of Tamara. You can play another damage dealer here in the spot if you choose, such as Mercedes, for example, who's also free, comes with uh, episode one of the game. So if that's something you want to do, you're more than welcome to do it. Just note that by having a higher frequency of hard-hitting attacks, the golem will counter a bit more. And there's a couple of reasons that I like Mascot Hazel. First off, she is freely available under the game's connections, just like Tamarin. She has a specialty change, just like Adventurer Raz, which I think is worth it because you will eventually use Mascot Hazel in very hard Labyrinth content later on. She has some pretty good uses in things like Advent. So it's not a wasted investment in uh, actually unlocking the specialty change for the character. Doesn't need to be six stars, just level 50 is fine. Five star Woken. Whatever you can get on her skills here for a girl in uniform and urgent regen, those things are just going to help smooth over your run, make things more consistent with the healing. Same thing here with the skill tree. Whatever you can get, that's fine by me. One of the main reasons we're choosing Mascot Hazel is that she has unhealable on her S1 Book of Fire. The Golem constantly receives healing from his teammates, 
So this will help mitigate that and help speed up the run. Sermia also has this perk. So between the two of them, you should pretty reliably be able to keep unhealable on the golem and therefore easily defeat him. Alternatively here, a girl in uniform gives increased attack greater, so greater attack buff, to Sermia on your team, which allows her to massively output huge amounts of damage over the course of a game. As for how to build her, simply put, the same as you would with Adventure Raz. Speed on your boots, health percentage on your ring, health percentage on your neck, and ideally around 65% effectiveness if you can get it, so that, that way she can consistently use the unhealable. Artifact is whatever you have. If you don't have specific Soul Weaver artifacts, just use a free one like Prophetic Candlestick. So now that you know how the team actually works, let's sit back and watch how an actual run plays out. So now with the first wave done, it's time to move on to the Golem himself. Golem has a couple of annoying things about him. He does a lot of AoE attacks, some of which defense break your entire team. Thankfully, our comp has two Soul Weavers on it, which could help mitigate those debuffs, especially if you're on an artifact like Wondrous Potion Vial. On top of that, the tree mob that you just saw there, it could also heal the Golem, which again is why I'm thankful for playing Hazel and Sermia because they have the unhealable debuff. So that will hopefully speed up the run. You don't really have to worry too much about the healing from the ads. Traditionally in the past, if you didn't play a team with unhealable, well, you would have to actually focus down the tree, which makes things very difficult uh, in auto team compositions when you're just trying to farm the golem as fast as possible. And there you have it. Easy peasy. Golem 13 team done. Again, all free to play units with free to play gear. Hopefully this was super helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, as always, leave a like or a subscribe. Helps me out a ton and it costs you nothing. If you still have questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below and let me know also your favorite Golem team that you play in the comments as well. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.